So I'm giving you your Project 5 portrait story a little early just so you have some time to think about what you want to do. So this is going to be a project where you create a five image portrait story and you can use someone that you know. We're the most comfortable obviously with people we know and so taking photos um, of strangers is okay or of a stranger for this is okay but it would probably be easiest if you do this with someone that you know. So you're going to use what you've already learned about point of view, color, light, and composition. Um, so some things to think about to get you started, some ideas, are going to be photographing your subject, doing something that they enjoy, such as cooking, playing, dancing, hiking. Um, or you could photograph your subject's transition in their life, whether it's being a new parent, a new college student, a new job, something along those lines. And so what you're going to turn in is an environmental portrait, a vertical portrait, horizontal portrait, close-up portrait, and a supporting element. So what does this all mean? I'm going to show you right now. Oops, all right, sorry, let me start right up here. Okay, so first off, an environmental portrait is a portrait of your subject in their surroundings. So for this, um, portrait story that I'm showing you. I shot a college student. She's an artist. She does sculpture. So we met at the studio uh, at school and so I took a photo of her working in her, in her surroundings, showing her um, in the place where she's actually working. So that's what we call an environmental portrait. Now next I did a vertical portrait and so this is her working again and vertical meaning up and down versus side to side, right? Next I did a horizontal portrait, so another portrait of her about a uh, waist up, but horizontal instead. Now we have a close-up portrait of her, and you can go even more close than that if you just cropped in and got really close right up here. That would work out well, too. And supporting elements. I took photos of some of the tools that she uses around the studio uh, to kind of talk about, you know, show a little bit more about her process. So all together, these are the five photos that would have been turned in. Okay, so to get to these though, I didn't just take five photos. Um, I took a whole lot of photos, so I got there early and took a bunch of photos of the stuff around her studio. Different tools and supplies, the different projects that were going on around the studio, the textures on the walls from the mess. <laughs> Okay, and then I started actually shooting her. Now for this, I did, um, you know, this was without a light. I did set up a light for this. It's not required for you to set up a light, but for this project, I did actually set up an extra light to light her up. And um, we've talked about some of these photos from this series before. You can see there's light coming in from over here. So started shooting and just, you know, let her just work. And just trying to uh, get different shots of her, did ask her to look up and smile for some of them. Getting closer, further away. And the different parts of her process. So that, again, using without a light and then with a light. Uh, for this project, I'd also shot with um, a graphics film camera. That's what that's that there. I'm 
trying some different points of view. So as you can see, I didn't just take a few photos and stop. I kept working it and kept taking photos. And then once I was done with the whole day, then I went through and um, selected my photos. Now, <laughs> this last shot I just threw in as a little show and tell real quick about um, uh, how I took this image further in Photoshop. This is not part of your assignment. So yeah, like I said, it's not going to just be, you know, get in there, snap a few photos and be done with it. I want you to really go through and take some time with your subject, take a whole bunch of photos, and then go back through and think about what tells the story and pick your five shots from those.